I'm Paul Pender. I'm the Interim Chief Financial Officer at the Santa Margarita Water District. I've also been the Director of Financial Planning here for the last three years. Really appreciate the opportunity to share our financial goals and challenges with you and how that leads into our anticipated rate adjustments this year. So my job has not been boring here over the last several years. We've had the pandemic, of course. We've dealt with high inflation. And we had two years of very dry drought. And we had two wetter, cooler years where our customers used less water. And, and this year, we're having a more of an average year, both in terms of the weather and how much water our customers are using. Uh, but through all this volatility and uncertainty, there have really been four common themes for our financial planning. Uh, one, we've needed to keep pace with the cost of imported drinking water. That makes up about a third of our annual costs. That's water that we purchase through the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. So State Water Project, Colorado River are the sources of the water. And it's been both the increases that we've already incurred over the last two years and also as we look out into the future where uh, the cost of imported water, we expect to go up about 10% per year into the future as well. Uh, two, we've faced significant other inflation as an industry and have some specifics on that that we'll share on the next slide. We've also adjusted to higher regulatory and compliance costs over the last several years, and we expect to continue to work through those into the future. And we've made significant investments into our systems infrastructure. And likewise, we know that looking ahead, that we have continued needs and that these will be critical to our planning efforts going forward. So in terms of cost drivers, I'm sure many of us are paying a lot more for home insurance, car insurance than you were just a handful of years ago. Power bills have gone up 20 to 40% for most uh, households in Southern California. Car insurance up 20, 30% as well. In terms of the water industry, we have some cost drivers here. These are some of the most uh, key costs that we face in terms of chemicals, insurance, construction, supplies, power, and fortunately, again, imported water at 20% uh, over the last two years, actually one of the lower ones on the list, uh, fortunately. But we've had significant increases in some of our key costs over the last uh, two years. And when you look at what I have, what we have here, these industry cost drivers, these, these make up in total about 60% of our total operating budget. And this has been a real challenge for us over the last uh, couple of years and also as we look forward, because these are really, these, these are costs that while we do try to manage them as best we can, they're, they're really external to us. And we don't have a lot of choice in terms of where we go to get power. Obviously we have constraints as far as our sources of water as well. In terms of uh, fiscal stewardship, we have uh, done a lot to mitigate these cost increases where compared to the numbers you see, we are able to uh, keep our costs bent down to some extent. We have done a lot to manage our power costs. We have large solar panel arrays at two of our largest facilities that provide the substantial amount of power for, again, two of our largest facilities. And the other thing we do is we go you know, power meter by meter at each facility and, and make sure that each power uh, connection that we have is on the best uh, rate plan with that power company in terms of the time of day, the exact usage pattern, and those kinds of things. So we've, we've saved about a million dollars per year in terms of what we pay for power costs. We've also looked to maximize our lease and investment income. We have uh, built up a fairly extensive leasing program over the last several years mainly with uh, cell companies who put towers on our properties throughout the area. We have a lot of properties in advantageous locations, and we generate about a million and a half in revenue per year from the leasing program that we've developed. What I like about that is it's a way that we can, we can get revenue that doesn't come directly from our customers. And likewise, with our investment returns, uh, we do look to be um, maximizing what we can get with our reserves and this has provided a good amount of cushion the last couple of years as we've been able to take advantage of interest rates in the short term and we've been able to double our investment income by several million dollars over the last two years and again that's 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 provided 
uh, a good cushion against some of the inflation that we faced. Going forward, we do not expect short-term interest rates to remain as high as they are currently. So that's another challenge that we're looking at in terms of our planning that we probably won't see this high returns into the future. We recently took advantage of a program from the Metropolitan Water District to pre-purchase future water for delivery. So what we purchased a fairly significant amount of water in the future at last year's price. So we were able to lock in the price on that water that will be delivered at some point over the next several years. We realized an immediate 11% return, about $2 million on making that pre-purchase. We also look to regional wastewater partnerships are an area that we've gained a lot of efficiencies in the past couple of years. We do try to share services and plants with other agencies. We've partnered with the city of San Clemente. They had some extra capacity in their treatment plant, and we were able to use gravity to get some of our flows there. The other thing we're looking to do with the region is a lot of these plants are old, they have fairly significant repair needs, full replacement upgrades in some cases. What we're working to do is make sure that as we partner with other agencies with these plants, that they are right-sized and that they meet our needs and are not providing more than we may need. And legislative initiatives. We have been working to steer regulations and compliance so that they're reasonable, that they make sense. And we've also been pursuing grant funding for some of our larger projects. So what does all this mean for our financial outlook when you, when you put it together in what we, what we call uh, building blocks of our finances, where what, at the end of the day, we, we, we think we can tell a story about our finances with about five financial building blocks. So on the top, we need to cover these three blocks. We need to cover our operating expenses. We need to cover our debt payments. And we need to make capital investments each and every year. And we need to cover these costs from our revenues. As we went through this year's budget and the current year, we do have a gap. We have a gap of about $14 million, you can see, and that's, that's really uh, the accumulation of some of those cost increases that we walked through. So we have a gap. It's about 9 to 10% of our needs. So as we look forward with in terms of the rate adjustments that we need to do into the future, there's really two things that we need to do. I mean, we need to close we need to close this gap. And then we also need to continue to look forward that we expect to see some continued cost increases. And so we need to both fill the gap and meet those increases into the future. As we look to adjust our rates, we're very limited by state law on how we do that. So we can only recover our actual costs, nothing more. We need to put our costs into different buckets. So in other words, our fixed cost of the service goes into a fixed charge on your bill. The amount of water you use for the commodity charge that goes into a specific commodity charge on your bill and that's going to be based on exactly how many units of water you use that month if you live at a higher elevation let's say up in rsm you're going to have an extra power surcharge because it costs us specific to that area cost to get that water to your specific zone we have to really be very careful in documenting our costs our rates have to be fair to all customers we have to ensure that each customer pays no more than their cost of us providing them the service. And we also need to ensure that customers who do use more or that cause us to incur higher costs based on their usage patterns, that they also pay those costs. Now, we did want to lastly offer a little bit of perspective on the value of our services. As a financial planner, I'm, I'm usually speaking more in terms of cost versus value talking about, you know, we talked about percentages, we talked about millions of dollars, but at the end of the day, we do also want to ensure that our services are providing value to customers. And so another way we do occasionally look at this is, is just baking it into the cost per gallon of our services. By this metric on the far right here, you can see that our average customer still pays just one penny per gallon. And that's, that's both for the water you consume for each month and also the cost of treating that water once it's left your home. In comparison, do you think that still is providing exceptional value compared to other essential services and, and uh, things that people consume? In terms of the uh, rate adjustment timeline, we are currently working on what's called the cost of service study. We're working to get all the rates to be uh, appropriate and fair to all customers. Uh, we expect to wrap that up shortly and put that notice in the mail to all customers. Then we have public hearing scheduled for 45 days after, have the public hearing, and then the increase would not be effective on people's bills for another uh, month or so after that. My name is Rob Grantham. I'm the general manager of the Santa Margarita Water District. 
We developed this tour series so our customers can see what it really is that we do every day. Behind the scenes to provide clean, drinkable water to over 220,000 customers in South Orange County. For us at the district, we get excited the fact that our customers want to understand what it is we do. It's our chance to share that and to help educate not only the parents but the children. What are we doing? How are we taking Mother Nature, putting that water through the tap? When we saw in the mail that uh, you guys were doing the tours, so I was really curious about being able to see everything uh, in person and learn from the staff directly, um, including uh, the presentation of the, the rate increase. So um, yeah, it's it's been great. I love that um, everyone's trying to be transparent um, about the plans. I think what is incredible is knowing how much is going on behind the scenes to make sure that we're safe in Orange County, South Orange County, and how fortunate we are that if we end up in a drought situation, there's a huge plan for what's going to happen. Yeah, it's definitely a, a great source of information and uh, all the leadership from the Water District is very accessible and willing to answer questions and, um, you know, as well as the staff, uh, and, you know, if you have any questions, uh, you know, you'll get an answer here. So great source of information, get to really see what's going on in our community. Very exciting stuff.